Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today it is a new year, so it is time for brand new robots. Obviously not always the case, but it is today. Uh, so last year we retired our big spinner, This Is A Party, the Antweight, uh, mostly because the arena just wasn't set up for it. The arena, the new arena at ARC is really a control bot focused arena. So we're going to build for the arena we have, but I can't give up doing damage to people. So I want to do damage and also be a control bot, which means saw blades. Uh, and you've probably seen the title of this video and the thumbnail. So it's no, no surprise to you that I'm not going the overhead chop style saw blade and instead going dual huggy saw blades. Or at least I hope to. I'm not really sure if we're even going to be able to make weight with this because to do all of this, we need to have two drive motors, and then we need to have two brushless motors, and we need to have two saws, and we need to have ESCs to control all of that. Then we need to have a servo motor that was going to articulate the two saws around, and then we have to have a chassis and arms and wheels, and it's a lot to fit into 150 grams. So uh, let's get started on this video, I think, by getting out all of the electronics we need and just weighing them and seeing if we can get away with even attempting this thing. And here we go, that is all of the components. There is a lot of these. Um, so let's dump all this stuff on the scale and see how we go. I've also included the battery. I'm not sure if I even listed that in my little list, but of course that needs to be there. And it's actually quite a heavy little component. I do have a smaller battery than this one, which we could use if we get close to that weight, but uh, I want to see how we go first. So, ooh, 80 grams, basically, with all of this electronics on here. <laughs> that does not leave a lot of weight for anything else. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Okay. That's going to be interesting, because uh, that, yeah, that doesn't leave a lot. It leaves, yeah, very little for a chassis and for uh, servo arms and things that we're going to need. Also, it doesn't have the saw blades on yet, so we do have a choice at the moment of saw blades. We have saw blades that are like this type of size, which are actually pretty big. This is what the thing has been designed for, like the cat I've done up is designed so that the tips of these massive saw blades don't touch. Uh, and these will add in an extra 7 grams each, so that's a 14 grams. Oh, it turned itself off. Uh, um, so yeah, these will add in an extra kind of 7 grams each. But I'm not sure I'm going to go with these. Even though they do, like they are the biggest ones I have and they are quite menacing, I actually think I might go for something like this, which is a touch smaller but has larger teeth gaps. So it's going to hit a little bit harder. But I mean, we're obviously trying not to hit all that hard. We're trying to grab and tear here. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. We'll see how we go. I think it might end up depending on the weight limit that we have left. Anyway, that's enough about this stuff. Let's head on through and uh, get some chassis printed. Okay, so here's the chassis and just like all of the attempts that I make to make a brand new weapon system, it is just a box. Uh, this has got very minimal forks on the front of it. They are very, very thin. Uh, literally, like I said, because there was not a lot of weight left after all of that electronics, so I had to thin down some of my plans a little bit. I've also added a 3mm nylon bolt in here. That's going to be the axle for one of the swing arms. So that's uh, this guy, actually. So we can just sit that in over that arm like that. And that's our, that's our swing arm for one of the, the brushless motors. But we'll need to get some uh, nuts to get that all together. So... Next step, I think we're just going to very quickly jam the servo in here. So it's all been designed up so the servo should just like slot in nicely and then screw down. And once we have this guy in place, we should... Oh, I'm going to grab some nuts for the other side. We should be able to do our first little quick test to see if this gear system is even going to work at this point because, yeah. I mean, this is the first time that I've done anything like this. It's the first time I've had to CAD gears for any project. So you never know. Something could have gone very, very badly wrong with my CAD. Which, you know, is a thing that happens. Cool. All right, so that's that. And then this guy in there. Uh, so the tolerances aren't quite right. 
but it does move. So one moves with the other, and that's a good start. All right, let's see where we are weight-wise on all of this, because once again, that is gonna be the big issue of the day. Uh, so where are we at? Yeah, that's at zero. Let's get these guys in. Unceremoniously dump everything on top and put the big saw blades on top too. We're at 133. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be interesting. We may not have a top plate on this, which will be scary considering the fact that we're gonna have these arms swinging around all over the place. Um, these are just quick PLA prints, so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is do ABS versions of all of these, because they will be lighter and stronger than the PLA versions, and yeah, there is not a lot of armor on this guy, so yeah, new prints time. So here's the ABS parts, and I've uh, increased the strength of some of these a little bit, like this front wall is a lot stronger in the ABS version than the PLA version, so these aren't actually all that much lighter than their PLA counterparts, but they should be a lot stronger and more impact resistant, so that's a good start anyway. Also, you'll see that there are uh, two different types now of the actual weapon arms. So uh, these guys over here, these are our saw arms that will have the brushless motors attached to them. Dook, like that. And then have the saw blades on top. Haha. -ha. Um, and that's those two. But then I've also given myself this option over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print some TPU inserts that sit in here and kind of hang out that way. Like that. So they act as more of a kind of keep away stick, essentially, like a movable keep away stick, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to slot some TPU up through here and yeah, have some keep away sticks. So this gives me some options from this point on. It means I don't have to run a dual saw configuration in every fight. And in actual fact, I don't have to run saws at all if I don't want to. If the matchup is just going to break the saws and I really just need to keep a spinner at bay, then maybe these guys are the way to go. Keep some TPU, some big thick pads of TPU in front of me and just corral them with that and uh, see how we go from there, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the idea with these and we can actually print a fair amount of TPU to fit into this gap here because the motor and saw blade and ESC combination is like 26 grams or something. So that's a lot of weight that we can put into a little batty keep away stick thing. Uh, that we're going to use uh, to, like I said, keep spinners away from us. So uh, now I think the next thing to do is to wire up the electronics. And of course, doing this separation makes the electronics more difficult because if we're only going to do a saw bot, that would be totally fine. Everything would just kind of get wired into one big lump and it would all work okay. But because we're doing this uh, keep away stick idea, I now need to run a bunch of connectors to things. So like the ESCs, they need to be run on a connector um, on both their signal and their power lines so that I can remove them as I need to uh, because yeah, there's no point swapping to a different system if we still have to have the motor and the saw blade and the ESC all attached to everything because it's just all soldered into the electronics. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna do the, the electronic soldering off camera because that stuff is kind of boring and very uh, repetitive. So we'll do that and then we'll try and do a final build up and just crossing our fingers that we make weight with this guy. So the soldering is done now and I really wish I had recorded this moment just before because I was so happy and then so sad all in a very quick short space of time there. Uh, so basically what I did was I loaded up this scale with everything I thought I needed. So all of the electronics, all of the parts and everything, and we're at 142 grams. I was like, yes, I can run the system. I can put a top plate on. Everything's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be really, really good. And then I realized I didn't have saw blades on there. <laughs> so the big saw blades that I wanted to run, these shiny boys, just one of them puts us over the limit. It puts us up to 151 grams. So just one of these blades on here, uh, kills us completely. Uh, the little blade doesn't though, but we go up to a level that we're not going to be able to fit another blade on, I don't think. Uh, I also did print a uh, TPU piece in that time, so this is our little TPU 
flexi arm piece. It's literally just push fit into the uh, slot in the purple piece for now. It will be glued before competition. But by taking out an arm and taking out a motor and a saw blade and stuff and putting this in, we can make weight with this. So there is a way to make weight, but I really want to see if I can work out a way to make weight with two saw blades. We might just have to go for the smallest saw blades I've got and uh, hope that we can still make weight somehow. <sighs> We're in dire straits here, unfortunately. Uh, um, so I got all the electronics together. Like I said, I showed you the weight stuff. Uh, I've been having a hell of a morning trying to get the saw blades to attach to these motors. I thought it was going to be an easy job. It was not an easy job uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I still haven't got it working. Uh, so I decided to do something easier, which was to plug all the electronics in and test failsafe on the new receiver because I had to wire a brand new receiver. Was testing that, decided to test the limits of the servo in terms of how far the arms were going to swing, and I burnt the servo out. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I have about half an hour or so before I need to pack up and go to ARC's January meet. So, yeah, this robot is not fighting at the January meet. However, this video is coming out after the January meet, so maybe after the event is over, I'll come back to this robot and try and get it all uh, to sit down and work. But, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not getting this guy done for that meet, which is a real shame because that's where I wanted to fight this thing. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's not happening. All right, I'm gonna have to, yeah, finish up Annie and uh, get something else ready to fight and then head over and fight and then, yeah, I'll see, see what I do about this thing because, yeah, apparently we, uh, we also need a five volt regulator in here for this guy and that means we are basically completely out of weight. Unless I can find a servo that is happy on those higher voltages, which I think there are some of those, so maybe that's what we'll do instead. But that will mean not finishing this guide this week because, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> we can't do that basically, so ouch. Uh, anyway, like I said, I've got stuff to do, so I'll do that and we'll be back. Okay, so it looks good, but there's some heavy caveats to that. It's still busted. Uh, basically, what you're seeing before you is me at an event, building this kind of on the table, hot gluing bits together, just to make it look like what it's gonna become eventually. Uh, a little bit of uh, showing the people I fight against, what they have to fear in the near future, and just a little bit of me wanting to actually have it together on the table. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna need to do a version two of this because the servos that I have are all just gonna burn out on 2S. There's nothing I can do about that. I literally just have to get new servos in. And also building this thing has given me some insights and uh, yeah, just some things that I need to remember for next time. So. The first being that the wires that I'm running on this guy are just way, way, way too long. They're all kind of coiled up on the inside of the thing. Uh, so I need to make sure that I shorten those wires down for the next time. Uh, and also, even though the servo does move the arms around quite well, uh, any slack and slop allows you to move one arm without moving the other arm, which is just a complete fail. Uh, so there is enough slap, slack and slop in this design right now that that is actually the case. So I need to make sure that the next version of this, when we have the new servo in place, actually uh, works properly. Doesn't have any of that slack, doesn't have any of that slop because yeah, I can tell you right now that as soon as there is a way for these arms to become disjointed, it is going to happen in a fight 100%, especially if we fight a spinner, uh, especially if we fight a vertical spinner at that. So there's that, I need to take some weight out of the chassis. Um, yeah, and I need to get some proper wheels on the thing. That's the, that's the other big deal here. But that's kind of where we're at. Also, I need to work out how to mount the saw blades because right now these guys are literally just hot glued in here. I do have the, 
uh, brushless motors that have an M4 screw thread on them, but they're a reverse thread, so I need to either buy a reverse thread nut or I need to come up with some other way of mounting the saw blades on here. I think maybe these reverse threads are actually gonna be the way to go, but I'm not quite sure yet. Um, it's gonna be a case of just, yeah, doing a bit of testing, working all that stuff out, and now I have some time because it's gonna take three to four weeks to get a new high voltage servo in for this thing. And yeah, the high voltage servo should fix a lot of problems actually because the high voltage servo is a smaller and lighter servo than the one that I've got in here, which is kind of crazy. And it was also a tip given to me by the guys that I fight with at ARC. So thank you so much to them. They will get this build back up and running again. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've got like three or four weeks before I even get that servo in. Then I'll need to build a new chassis and everything and get all that together. So it could be over a month before we see this guy again, but we have a couple of months before we fight next, so we should have some time to get this all together and get it actually working. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one. Sorry that it didn't quite come out as I expected, but this is the way it goes with prototyping, especially when you're prototyping something quite this complicated. Uh, yeah, and I will see you in the next video.